Okay, so this is the second video about how to chop up samples into smaller pieces. In the last video, we looked at using the slice option to chop up a large sample into small equal parts. This time, we're going to look at a different option that goes with samples, which is called onset, and that works slightly differently. So I'm going to use another sample here. I'm going to use the loop sample again, but we don't have to use loop samples, but just so you can see how this works. So here is this loop garzool. Okay, so that is how the loop goes. Now, uh, so you can see how this works a little easier. I have here a waveform. This is exactly that same loop that we just heard. Okay, so the way onset works, uh, to go back, slice would chop this entire sample into just equal parts, okay? The way onset works, and I'll even zoom in slightly here, is that onset is going to chop up each little sound section, okay? So what we have here, so the first chop would be this, all right? And the way onset works is that it sort of looks at when we go from a sort of a small sound wave to when we see the amplitude of the sound wave jump back up again. Uh, in audio editing, this is called a transient, which means we switch from a very low amplitude to a very high amplitude. So the way that onset works is it just sort of can recognize these changes in amplitude and will chop up the sample according to where that big jump is. So this would be maybe the first chop that it would do. This would be the second chop that it would do. Here, actually, so you can hear it. So it's really just cutting out little sounds that occur, sort of separating all the different sounds that it can detect. Okay, and then we might get one like this. Okay, and then we might get one like this. Okay, so this is useful so that we can actually cut out specific sounds like a kick drum or a snare drum and use those to sort of make different uh, patterns and drum beats. So here's how it works. I'm gonna go to, uh, sample. I'm just gonna write on oops, on set, which do that, and then just like with an array index or like we did with um, the slices, we there's gonna be a list that we can do. So like on set zero, on set one, on set two. So if I want to hear the first one, I would do on set zero. Okay, and there you hear. And just to go back to what this would look like. Okay, so that's what you're hearing, that first chunk of the sound wave there. And if I do the first, okay, and just to sort of keep it consistent, I won't do this for every one, but, okay, so we see it cutting it up like that. Now, that might not be accurate. Let's see what the second one sounds like. Okay, so yeah, it might even chop them up a little more. So this one might even get that sound. Yeah, which sounds like it did, okay? But that is the idea, and I go to three. Okay, four, five, six. So you can go through the one of the, there is some sort of uh, function or command you can call and it will give you like a list of how many. Thing about onset is you're not always sure how many different pieces it chopped the sample into. So there you might need to do a little work, okay? But right off the bat, I have sort of a kick drum there. And then I think I have like a snare drum one of these like that okay so now what I could do is I could make a live loop I'll call this um, chop two because I have another loop I'm gonna come back to in a little bit and here and then so the sleep values don't really make a difference in that uh, I don't have to like match anything up these are just short quick samples very similar to like the drum samples or the electric samples or any sort of short sample so I don't really need to worry about matching a sleep up I could just do something like this for example so then I just get this pattern going of that you know I could speed it up a little bit So now I have this drum sound that I like from this loop, but I just can zero in on that one sound, all right? So let's say now I wanna make a pattern of a couple of different sounds from this, maybe even just a kick and a snare. So for onset, I could just do the ring. I think it was these two, okay? And I could run this. All right, and there I 
they go. Okay, and if I wanted to, I could maybe copy and paste and just add like some other. I'll make this three. I'll see what was, I think it was maybe like two and I could double this up. Maybe I'll increase the amp a little bit here. Okay, so uh, maybe like six. So that's a little loud. So I was just trying to create maybe like a little Okay, so now I can make my own drum beats using the drum sounds from this loop, but uh, I can create any kind of pattern. You could go back and do this with the array drum beats that we made. So instead of using samples from specific, you know, like drum samples, you could then go use this onset and make a drum beat using sounds like you have from here. So let me get rid of this for a second. So that's one way I could do it. Of course, I could make, you know, add a few different, I'm just gonna randomly type in some sounds here. Uh, I don't know, seven. I don't know what all these are going to sound like, but you can experiment. Okay, so I can make a pattern using that, all right? Similar to the what I did with uh, the slice, I could also here use pick. So it is just going to choose a different onset each time. Sometimes I can I maybe speed it up. All right, so I can get some interesting patterns. One thing I'll say about onset is that each chunk, each little bit that it chops up, uh, they're not all going to be the same length as they are with the slice. So some might be longer, some might be shorter. So one thing you can do just to sort of make everything at least fit in that same time to go with your sleep, you could add a release and that will just sort of fade everything out so that it fits with that so you can match a release up to your sleep and it'll be a, just a little cleaner sounding. Okay, and then what I can do, uh, similar to the slice, if I want to create like a repeated pattern of random sounds, I again could do like 16 times do and end, and then I just have use random seed uh, like this, and then I just get a pattern. Okay, and then of course now I could make a live loop, I could make a bass line with a synth, I could make a melody. So one more thing I'll just show you just to tie it back to a previous lesson. I could add the spread function here to create a little bit more of a rhythmic interest. So let me do maybe like 16, I have to do dot tick. So this is just sort of going through, I have 16 times through, 16 in my spread. So it's going to play me uh, as even a pattern as it can. So not, it'll play nine sounds out of 16 beats, okay? So I can... Okay, and there we have it. Right? Uh, you sometimes you speed it up, it sounds a little more interesting. Uh, maybe I'll even do this. I'm gonna make 32, I'm gonna change my spread here to give me a bit more sound. Let's go to like 26, see how that sounds. Again, you could throw another sample. Let me just show you. I'm gonna do maybe like Ambi Lunar Land is an interesting one. So let's see how this sounds. Okay, so here we get a little bit of an issue with sort of those samples being longer. So one thing you can also add, I'm gonna go in here and do sustain, and I'm just gonna do zero. Okay, so that means it won't last a long time. It'll just cut everything short and make it fit exactly the way I want it here. Okay, so there you go. So that I'm gonna, I'll keep that stain. I kind of like the loop guards rule thing I had going there. So I'm gonna keep that and again. So 
again, the onset's going to vary in terms of duration and length and stuff like that. So adding a sustain, a zero, and a release to kind of go with your sleep is always a good way. So now I'm just going to take this and match it up uh, with a previous one that I did from the last video where I have these two sounds going together now. So let's kind of put this together and see what it sounds like. So one thing I'm definitely going to do is turn down the amp. Now this starts to make things a lot more interesting than just sort of using the regular loop that you have and kind of building over that. So there's so much more that you can do now playing around with chopping up samples as well. So I encourage you to try different loop samples which have a lot of drum sounds in them, but see what else you can do. Keep in mind that this is gonna work much better with longer samples. The longer a sample is, the more you can chop it up. If it's just like a bass drum sound or a percussion sound, it's not. there's not really much you can do to cut that up. So focus on loop samples definitely or anything that seems like it's a long sample with lots of different sounds happening in there okay so that is it for this week um this is the checklist for the project if you're going to submit this for the music engagement assignment so chopping up samples using the slice option creating a pattern of slices either with a ring or using random patterns for pick uh, and then creating a pattern chop samples using onset with the spread function also a challenge if you want to so the i think it was two projects ago where we were making drum beats using arrays and then kind of ticking through those arrays and playing sounds with if statements try and do something with that where instead of a sample is a drum sound you use a chop sample using onset okay so that's not required but if you are looking to challenge yourself you can uh here is a the reference sheet it talks about the two ways to chop up using slice or onset so you can refer to that as well uh and that is it for this week if you want also you could add another live loop using a synth and add a bass line or melody or something uh whatever you can imagine to go along with these sounds all right so can't wait to hear what you did